business strategies and technology strategies are becoming inseparable driven by the need to scale form strategic partnerships across ecosystems and engage customer in new ways consumer goods and services companies are looking for tech solutions that can help them navigate this new reality accenture technology vision 2021 defines five key trends and addresses critical insights into how indian consumer goods and services sector can navigate this change don't wait for the new normal build it good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to all of you to accenture's tech vision 2021 I'm Anil Chopra, we do business consulting at Advent Media Research, your host for this event. The Accenture Technology Vision 2021 aims to discuss the key technology trends that will shape business and technology over the next few years and outlines the critical actions that leaders must take to adapt to change due to these trends. Today's event is focused at consumer goods and services segment where we'll discuss the key technology trends and changing consumer behavior that's shaping the sector's future. We have with us five distinguished experts who will share their views around addressing changing consumer behavior with technology. I'd like to welcome our guests, uh, Mr. R N Mohanty, President, Pretty Light Industries; Mr. Narendra Agrawal, Group CIO, Dabur; Mr. Vadhinathan S, Director, Global Head Technology, Unilever; Mr. Manish Gupta, MD and Client Group Lead, Products at Accenture; and Mr. Suhas Devaraju, MD, Consumer Pro Goods and Services at Accenture India. Welcome, gentlemen. So, dear attendees, now before we begin, please note that for the duration of today's event, all participants will be on listen-only mode. However, you can send your questions via chat, uh, and please do keep sending them throughout the uh, session. And we'll try to take up maybe one or two questions between the sessions. Plus, we'll have a final Q and A round towards the end. So, without any further delay, I would like to invite Mr. Manish Gupta, MD, Client Group Lead Products, Accenture in India. to kick start the session with a presentation after which we will do the panel discussion thank you and over to you manish okay is it is it visible now yes yes my screen is visible okay um, so uh, thank you uh, thank you anil and uh, welcome all the panelists and all the participants um, uh, very excited to uh, to share a perspective uh, on the tech vision uh, 2021 essentially during the pandemic it became starkly clear that there is no leadership without technology leadership thriving in this moment will require ambitious leaders not to content to rehabilitate the business what it was but willing to upend conviction and wield their vision for the future this is a unique moment where uh, we can create uh, uh, we can we, we can uh, We, we can create a better world and redefine what we call as value. So value essentially moves from uh, not the financial value, but also how people drive it, the impact left on the environment, and growing inclusivity and more. To give an example, uh, Rolls Royce in, in UK uh, when they were facing a problem during the pandemic of uh, not available. Uh, 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 ventilators. So, Royals Royals just designed their entire supply chain of using ventilators. Within five weeks, the company secured all the parts across hundred suppliers and uh, enabled it uh, and start producing uh, the ventilators across the three entities. Uh, <clears throat> uh, some of you would be aware for more than twenty years, Accenture has developed the technology vision, uh, which is redefining the uh, how the how the technology trends would look forward to and uh, that has made a significant impact across the entire industries and are actionable from a business oriented perspective so you see five uh, uh, trends which are planned for here during the next uh, uh, 10 minutes i will talk through them what we have also done in terms of research across the consumer goods companies in india and uh, 99% of the executives uh, in india actually responded that uh, in particular the global health crisis has brought significant pressure uh, to bear on the four aspects technology architecture their strategy workforce and process uh, so as we go into the next uh, trends in terms of uh, how do we see this emerging 
uh, around that. The first one is uh, uh, stack strategically architecting a better future. And as we put leg, companies will now be competing on their technology architecture. Enterprises can custom tailor every layer of it. But building and building the most competitive stack means thinking differently. Business and technology strategies must become indistinguishable. Uh, building a competitive stack starts with accumulating technical wealth. Cloud strategy and microservices are the key. I mean, if you if you think about uh, uh, from an architecture, and as we are going and having conversations uh, with our uh, with our clients, and uh, uh, everybody, uh, e-commerce is moving. As as you could look at, uh, they have to expand their business and talk about fashion retailers. Uh, during the pandemic, when the, there was an entire lockdown, and the only sole source of revenue which they would have were their dot coms. And uh, they have not invested, and most of our uh, most of our fashion retailers really have not invested in terms of creating their dot com sites. Um, so, and, and and on the other side, we have all the marketplaces which are gaining a lot of business, uh, essentially the Amazons and the Flipkart. So, the whole technical architecture becomes very important. Uh, you would have read about uh, what Tesla is doing in terms of electronic cars, and uh, now we are seeing Ola replicating this uh, and moving their horizon of business, moving away from the fleet to actually getting uh, electric cars onto this. So this essentially is a key aspect in terms of which will essentially define uh, the competitive advantage around it. The second one is the technologist, I technologist, and what essentially it would mean is that. Uh, Technology is democratizing. Natural processing, uh, natural language processing, low code platforms, robotics process automation are adding a grassroots layer to enterprise innovation systems. By democratizing technology, every employee can be an innovator. And uh, this uh, uh, breaks the boundary from the technology and the business organization. Give an example there's a company called G&J PepsiCo which is basically a largest uh, family-owned bottler in the US. Uh, uh, what they have done is using micro uh, Microsoft Power Apps is basically enable the business organization in order to develop apps uh, using the power of platforms, data, and, uh, and technology, and AI. And uh, they and there's a bunch of uh, seven eight business people with having no experience on coding. They got together and developed the app. Uh, they take a picture of the products on the shelf, and uh, they recognize the product. And based on uh, based on that, they can uh, automatically place an order. So what it happens is, in order to it, it, it gives the power of technology to the business organization reduces the skill gap and also basically a better acceptability from the business in terms of the technology innovation. So we, we believe we see this also growing massively uh, as a part of it. The third one is uh, anywhere, everywhere. And uh, I mean, uh, at the start of pandemic, enterprises ignited the biggest workforce transformation. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that transformation within India because uh, what we have seen with reference to the Indian clients, they were not too conversant in terms of uh, uh, in terms of having remote working, but I think uh, was pushed by the pandemic uh, in order to do this. Uh, now what we are seeing is the concept of, uh, uh, we heard about bring your own device, it is about bringing your own environment. And uh, I mean, uh, in terms of where the executive feel that they can work from wherever. What it gives is, is the immense power in terms of uh, uh, to reimagine the entire uh, enterprise operating model. Uh, wherever, to tap on the resources wherever they are, and uh, from the global pool perspective as well. Uh, some of the examples, I mean, uh, we have seen companies like Zoho. Yeah, I'm sure you all are aware it's an India uh, software uh, setup in terms of the CRM. They have opened their head office uh, in a small town in Chennai, right? And they are quite bullish about it and quite vocal and visible about it in terms of. So we will see more of those 
uh, in terms of uh, bring your environment and we have to continue to invest in terms of the capability to enable the people to work from where they are. The fourth one really is the mirrored world, uh, the power of massive intelligent and digital twins. Um, I mean, the growing investment in data, AI, and digital twin technologies are giving rise to a new generation of business and innovation. I mean, uh, we call it a mirrored world or uh, more of physical world is represented in our digital space. To give you a perspective, Ford created uh, 10 interactive augmented reality videos to help the customer uh, experience the new electric cars. And uh, there's no need for the consumers to go to the uh, to the for the test drive within the units. Uh, what we are also seeing, uh, if we talk about from a consumer goods perspective, uh, since during the pandemic, uh, uh, there was no physical connect. Uh, what we have also seen that the role of augmented reality in the digital marketing is growing. I understand a lot of large consumer goods companies are doing their pilots, and uh, uh, and the initial results have been quite encouraging. So, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of how we continue to leverage that and this will continue to grow. Uh, the fifth one is really in from, uh, from me to me. I mean, uh, uh, this is really in terms of uh, uh, how we leverage the larger ecosystem into the construct and redefine uh, the business models around it. Uh, just to give you an example from Accenture, uh, the chief human resource officers from Accenture, uh, LinkedIn Financial Group, ServiceNow, and Verizon jointly created a digital platform to connect workers with the new roles. The platform called People Plus Work Connect maps out employees available for work and roles that need to be filled and letting HR professionals from different companies collaboratively fill talent needs across the organization and keep more people employed. So these are the type of uh, new possibilities which will happen and uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure all of you would be leveraging the larger ecosystem uh, as we, as we, uh, for solving the business needs uh, and this cuts across the, across the, across the value chain. So these were the five uh, key uh, tenants in terms of uh, what we believe uh, would happen and uh, we are already seeing uh, uh references of that globally and also in india and also with reference to the consumer goods industry happy to take any questions around this point of time and then thank you. you yes thank you manish for those insights um i'm sure that they will serve as a trigger to the discussion with our panel now which is around adapting to changing consumer behavior with technology um i will just uh, in the meantime just checking in case there is any questions from the audience that are coming in uh, i would request all the uh, panelists to please uh, join in on the panel switch on their mics and so that we can start off with the discussion <laughs> great so um welcome back and, uh, you know as we all know the pandemic has impacted uh, the the service sector is no exception. The consumer demand actually increased in many cases. It has to be with so many other challenges, you know, in terms of supply chain disruption or you know, a sharp drop in the footfall at retail stores and so on. And at the same time, consumer needs and behavior has uh, you know changed drastically as a result, where with a very massive shift towards on. And uh, consumers are now shopping differently, digital payments, contact There are so many trends that are happening. Their journey and expectations have evolved. Um, and then, of course, we need to how technology is being used to cause the consumer to participate. I think there is a need to understand this uh, you know, changing consumer behavior, how to use technology to address it. And how can organizations meet this change? Around adapting to consumer behavior with technology. And uh, speaking of you know, changing consumer behavior, I would like to start off with uh, Narendra. So, on what changes have you observed in consumer behavior, attitude, 
I hope I'm audible because there's a bit of uh, background noise. Yes, you're audible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, our realization, uh, especially during this last one and a half, two years, given the whole COVID impact has been, while there is nothing fundamentally that has changed uh, in behaviors, I think there's been a massive acceleration in the changes we were forcing in consumer behaviors. Uh, what do I mean by this? Uh, one is consumers have started becoming more health conscious. The focus on uh, trust-based brand products, branded products has increased. Focus on more natural, uh, sustainable uh, brands has definitely increased phenomenally. Right. Second, of course, uh, is how they now receive content and communication. Right. Uh, with the whole pandemic and the shift to digital, uh, now they see many avenues like OTT and all which were gradually evolving and now suddenly become mainstream in many ways uh, in terms of how they receive communication. Third is, of course, the whole expectation of personalization. There's so much noise out there uh, that a consumer is uh, always, uh, you know, stretched between a lot of uh, communications that are coming. So there's very little time attention span uh, that he has for any such brand communication uh, that comes to him or her. And there, I think bringing personalization uh, has become very, very big change for us as an organization. So this three, I think, have been the fundamental changes, uh, you know, that have accelerated during this period. Thanks, Narendra. I think good point. Uh, Attention span obviously goes down in the online world and uh, there is obviously greater expectation in terms of personalization. Uh, otherwise, it will be just, uh, you know, they will feel that it's just being sent to everyone. So it may not be meant for me, that kind of a thing. Uh, Vedi, what are your views? What have you witnessed in terms of changing, you know, customer behavior during this time? Um, Narendra was good. quite a bit spot on, on uh, you know, the readiness of the customer being uh, digitally ready uh, to uh, be reached. That's the first thing, right? There was never uh, that readiness in the customer or the end consumer uh, where whenever someone reached digitally, it was not being taken, uh, you know, with that level of comfort that is there now. Uh, now, which also means that the physical reach that the market or the companies used to have, yeah, uh, which was probably the strength, is equally the, the same strength that the digital reach that some of the new companies carry now. The reason why I say that is, uh, you know, uh, the physical reach was looked at as a strength because it could convince, uh, build the trust, loyalty, and also most importantly, influence buying uh, at the point of buying decisions at the point of sales. Right? Um, we are trying to do that uh, digitally now, and that's happening even more focused rather than rapid forming uh, in uh, many areas. So that focused digital connect is something that is definitely, uh, you know, reached. Uh, from an experience perspective or the consumer behavior perspective, what has also changed is uh, digital is also now being seen as uh, safe, uh, fast, and uh, the entire ease of experience is what is being actually uh, a catalyst in this entire uh, move towards digital. There was always, you know, when, when you look at uh, you know millions or billions of consumers or even millions and billions of retailers that we go to, etc. Uh, adoption of digital was always a question mark, right? They are ready to adopt, and that's predominantly what um, you know. Most of the industry is now looking at how do you catch this wave where uh, you know they are ready, and uh, uh, how do they pick up? One one thing that I also wanted to call out here is um, the line between a personal consumer experience vis-a-vis -a, -vis a customer uh, or a retailer's business experience is also failing quite a bit, right? Uh, a customer or a retailer is a consumer in a parallel world. And what he expects out of uh, e-commerce experience as a consumer is what he expects out of a business as well. Uh, when he uh, uh, the company. So that predominantly, uh, you know, connecting with is what has changed uh, from overall behavior 
uh, perspective. Thank you. Uh, good that you also brought in the retailers because uh, that's another segment that is also what you know to, to look at because uh, it's not just the consumer that is important, but what about the customer also? Uh, you know their behavior also has changed. Retailers themselves. So uh, Suhas, uh, you know my question to you is a little different in terms of the you know changing behavior of the customer. How have you seen? You know what, what are the changes that you observed? Yeah, no, so I think like Wiley said. All of us are consumers, uh, and some of the habits we're forming as consumers uh, are spilling over to our B2B domain also. So, as a B2C consumer, I, I develop some habits of maybe instant gratification, uh, of maybe information transparency, of next day delivery, of a plethora of choices when I try to buy something. All these are coming through in the B2B space also, uh, because the same expectation is now coming through uh, in a B2B engagement. Uh, and we see that uh, the operating models that exist today, uh, the typical operating model which takes it uh, takes goods from or services from a manufacturer to uh, an end shopper or a consumer, that operating model is also changing. We see multiple archetypes evolving now. Uh, the traditional distributor model which exists in CPG possibly uh, is changing and evolving into four different archetypes in our view, right? because we've been doing this discussion and study internally with an accent also. We see the EB2B model evolving more and more, wherein uh, retailers depend on digital means of engagement and digital means of purchase. Uh, we see a lot of hyper-local models coming in, right? Uh, you, would, you, would, you would see people buying chocolates on Swiggy possibly, uh, or not just, not just on a D2C side. And of course, then we see uh, companies also evolving and bring a, bringing a lot more digital data technology into their own operating models, right? So, so uh, operating models are getting disrupted from, in my view, at least from one to four. Uh, that's, that's the nature of disruption that we see. And of course, accelerated by COVID. Yes, absolutely. I think good that you pointed out. Yes, all this is actually accelerating because of COVID, but yes, uh, so so many new different digital models that are coming in and chocolates over swiggy definitely nowadays anything you can buy over swiggy that's the kind of change that we're seeing in terms of distribution models um thanks for those input um uh, mr mohanti uh, i'll just uh, you know i have a question for you in terms of now that you know we've, we've, just, we've seen all this change in the consumer behavior customer behavior what aspects of the business need to undergo you know some rapid digital transformation in this new normal where uh, you know we are seeing uh, you know so rapid acceleration of digital adoption change uh, probably has to be localization we cost many cases you have to serve from the local sources because the because of the lockdown logistics disruption and uh, um, the uh, relocation of the uh, people from one place to the other. So the localization is a main uh, change. So the meeting the requirements of the people, customers from the local resources is one of the major changes which pandemic has uh, enforced. And uh, because the logistics has been dis disrupted. That is one of the major changes. What else? Uh, uh, um, yeah, that I can see. Yeah, um, I was just trying to, uh, you know, look at your feedback around the digital transformation bit as to, uh, you know, we are, we are hearing localization from your side, but in terms of digital transformation, uh, would you like to add Digital that? transformation in our case, I just add the, we try to manufacture at the point of use because of the logistics again. And so the, you can manufacture distributed manufacturing at the point of consumption, local, there is another localization. You can manufacture at the point of consumption so that a uh, lot of distribution requirement is not there. So th that is one more localization only. I see. Right. Localization is the key word over there. Uh, Manish, uh, you work you work with so many different consumer goods and services uh, companies. Based on your experience, you want to tell us about you know what aspects of business really uh, need to undergo rapid digital transformation now 
that uh, everything is being accelerated because of covid see right uh, see uh, in terms of uh, as i was saying right uh, in terms of in order to lead in this transformation we really need to think about technology first right and the entire business is disrupted i mean as mr monty was saying that uh, distributed trade supply chain is uh, disrupted uh, we were talking about how the consumer and the customer is impacted their their preferences their personalization everything is impacted in terms of so the intent is really in terms of uh, we need to prioritize but really think about driving digital transformation and uh, and also we should not make any mistake in terms of the digital transformation is reference or confided to be driven by the by the it organization it's an equal agenda by the business and it's a c suite discussion because unless they bought into this particular strategy it will not uh, take that lead, right and i'll give you a bit of insight in terms of right now some of our clients are essentially in a dilemma right because the covid first phase happened and they imagined and i mean we i uh, we, we have one slide which says that i wish i could have invested in digitalization i wish i could have invested in in uh, but imagine they were just thinking about it and they were impacted by phase 2 of the covid right now they have a hole in their balance sheet they don't know how to get to that level of number within this year but they all need to invest because they they know this is not just the only second phase they might be a third phase coming down the road so it's really thinking from a long term perspective rather than having a short term vision in terms of this is imperative and uh, it's proven uh, at least in the consumer goods company who are taking that lead will accelerate in terms of the in terms of the growth so i think this is fundamental right absolutely one point uh, is that very clear that it's no longer just the it organizations uh, you know uh, responsibility but overall business responsibility is there to undergo digital transformation and look at it very seriously to be able to you know really leverage in this current uh, uh, you know times that are there okay so um, you know let me come to take that uh, discussion on digital transformation and you know move ahead on that and really talk about you know the technology and the architecture so uh, so has i have a question for you you know uh, in terms of um, you know the while technology architecture is important and I'll, i i will be coming to you know narendra and vadi to ask around that but uh, i think relevance and reliance on data has also increased as we move online so what are the new capabilities skills and tools that are really needed to be you know brought in to leverage data now that we are in this online world yeah sure see i think uh, like we said the digital transformation that's happening is happening uh, across industries and across functions of course different different industries will focus on different areas of or different functions because that's what is giving them the the strategic advantage which they can sustain over time right uh, so so uh, for me uh, it's not just a technology play it's a technology people data process play right and 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 technology and data really go hand in hand uh if you look at the kind of uh, things that people are trying out uh, somebody spoke of personalization uh, the consumer 360 view and getting good quality first party data which can then be used to digitally engage with the consumer is is a big big uh, big big play right uh, that's from a pure consumer and growth perspective equally if you look at say supply chain uh, understanding where your costs are and using analytics possibly for better forecasting so that your overall uh, working capital that is tied up in the supply chain reduces is possibly another use of of data and analytics so so we see data and analytics coming into play both from a growth perspective and from a cost perspective and it's impacting the way uh, uh, an organization engages with its consumers and customers and the way it operates internally right Uh, so from that perspective i think uh, the first step for many companies is to see what kind of data they have uh, where they are using it and what kind of leverage they are getting from it 
right? I mean, for me, that's the first step that any company needs to look at from a data perspective. Map its 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 data sources and its relative importance and see where it's using it. And then from there, take it forward to saying that now that I know what my data sources are, which is the best way to actually start using it in specific simple use cases. And maybe something as simple as let me get make sure that everybody has access to the same information, everybody has access to the same APIs. And from there, take the maturity journey forward to say that, can I use this data then effectively to drive growth or drive costs down, right? So, so it's almost a journey of maturity, which the company starts with. Uh, from a technology perspective, uh, I think, uh, as I said, data is closely linked to technology. So in that sense, making sure that you have a single source of truth, uh, but the single source of truth is such that it doesn't tie you down and slow you down, that you can create multiple versions of, of, of data from that single source of truth, and then build more and more sophisticated uh, analytics and, and use cases. Uh, that for me is 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 the core technology investment. Uh, the other piece that I think you should look at when you look at data and technology is also in terms of data democratization and actually getting your organization to trust and use data. Uh, many companies are used to having an MIS team which will give them the information they need, uh, and that's what they trust, right? So how do you how do you take the organization along on the data journey? Get them to be more understanding of what data is there, how they can use it, bringing up that capability. That becomes the sort of third angle for how you use data. So, so understanding and leveraging data, using technology to to build on the data, and then bringing people along uh, to actually trust and use that data. I think for me, those are the three pillars against which the companies companies need to work. Thank you. I think uh, good points on the technology and data front that yes, uh, single source of truth and there has to be trust. And uh, of course, the data journey has to be looked into. So thanks a lot for that. Um, Narendra, uh, besides, you know, uh, would like to hear your views around, around of course, the data, but uh, not just data, what other changes are imperative, you know, in the technology architecture and for success in this, uh, you know, new digital world? Okay, uh, maybe I'll touch upon data during uh, the points I make, uh, Anil. So for me, uh, given this whole uh, wave that we've all gone through, I think certain aspects have become very imperative and uh, my panelists also captured them somewhere or the other. Uh, the first one, and I'll just extend on some of those. Mm -hmm. I think fundamentally the realization that IT alone cannot do it. Uh, but it requires active business involvement uh, in the entire journey for digital has uh, hit the nail. Uh, and in fact, in our organization now, we've really stepped up that journey uh, of bringing tech and business together to build a common digital uh, transformation. Not only that, extending it, uh, we don't believe we can just build it internally. Uh, it takes a lot of active partnerships with organizations as Accenture, which will take us through this journey. So. It is actually business tech and industry partnerships, which we believe will now lead us to this digital transformation journey uh, so that we have a more rounded view around where we are headed towards, right? And this then has a lot of levers to it because we talked about the hole in the PNL that has come, but there is an investment. So how do we do co-innovation? How does the partner ecosystem uh, understand those business imperatives, business desire, but also the challenges around the costs? and work with us through this journey so that it does not hit us immediately, but it evolves over a period of time, right? So I think the whole partnership ecosystem uh, to drive digital transformation has extended beyond the organization itself and led by business now more than an individual, uh, right? The second aspect uh, is of course around data. Uh, th there has been a traditional challenge in terms of data being available, very delayed in a static form, and while we've always said that business does not always use data to make decision making, but it has also been about availability of the data in the right shape and form for them to be able to make uh, decision making. So I loved what Suhas said, democratization of data uh, is very, very important. You know, How do we make data available to the business in a form they understand uh, with the flexibility they desire at their fingertips, uh, which is real time, high performing data availability to them, and then really step it up through advanced analytics that helps them understand how the future is shipping up uh, through forecast, trained analysis, 
and other such areas areas like for example we are looking at consumer insights mm-hmm. to trend jacking on the sort of communications we want to do with business so i think data from a personalization lens data from an opportunity lens data from a decision making lens has become absolutely crucial and how you design your data architecture so that it is high performing real time and in a shape and form that business understands has become very very crucial that to me second uh, big aspect or imperative uh, you know that we seeing third and sounds counterintuitive coming from a cio but i think tech dependency itself in that journey uh, has to reduce as we move ahead in this curve now what do i mean by this uh, at aber for example we are in the business of giving our consumers healthy products we are not in the business of creating technology solutions so much right so when manish talked about the power apps example the low code uh, capabilities that we want to build how do we crowd uh, source solutions not depending just on few tech uh, experts i think has become phenomenally important uh, for us so that more and more the solutions that we build are not dependent on tech to be further uh, you know leveraged rather uh, you know led by business to further evolve so i think these are the three big uh, imperatives the fourth of course we don't always touch upon uh, in such forums is security you know uh, the cyber security ecosystem in terms of the external threats has rapidly evolved uh, organizations have realized uh, now more than ever at a very senior leadership level that they've not given it the due diligence that it deserves mm-hmm. uh but equally it's also about the capabilities of the tech organization itself in terms of stepping up the security so i think that is the fourth big aspect how do you make it more uh you know omnipresent as a construct uh, in the organization uh, with the business uh, when we're talking about phishing and such attacks coming in because bulk of the challenge, uh, you know security threats eventually come from such areas right so i think fourth is security from a technology awareness perspective to me have become absolute importance thanks i think uh, good perspective uh, around those four different aspects data technology security and reduce dependence on tech actually so that that is a rather a surprising thing coming uh, from a cio uh vadi what are your views around uh, you know there are changes that are imperative in the technology architecture look uh, when you look at the technology architecture what is it's going to give you as an output is what is important uh, right what is um am i audible hello sorry uh, i'm audible so breaking in between here okay so uh, okay uh, i guess i'm back now um sorry what i was saying is uh, as a from a technology architecture perspective uh, what becomes important is what is it going to give you as an output to the business uh, is what is important right the way i look at it is it should bring in the efficiencies in the business um, effective reach to your customers and consumers uh, the speed and agility with the change in the market and of course uh, you know how do you actually build uh, uh, i i would slightly go away from what uh, narendra had said how do you build uh, a business that's a technology business right every business is a technology business going forward now um so how do you look at it from that perspective is what makes it important so when i look at um, you know uh, scale efficiencies uh, you know of course everyone is talking about cloud and other things but it's also important for us to make sure that we we give that scalability kind of a window to the uh, business that's the first part the second part is uh, you know we we had touched upon uh, microservices architecture in some cases right the reason why i'm saying that that becomes very important is that uh, you know when you go to the market um uh, you you are doing something from a technology perspective uh, to bring the efficiencies in the business there's someone in the market to do it with you so you need to keep doing that uh, uh, keep bettering yourself uh, every now and then and there are also niche areas where you know you have players who bring in that kind of an expertise so how do you build a, a plug and play kind of a model one and how does that plug and play model keep changing as and when the business or the industry keeps changing becomes very very important so you need to be ready for that agility uh, and microservices model to a large extent helps you do that as well so that becomes uh, very important uh, the third one um, like what uh, you know everyone was talking about 
uh, you know, data becomes everything, right? Uh, all all decisions uh, in business uh, is based on uh, data these days. Uh, and uh, most of the businesses are uh, data-driven businesses now going forward, right? Um, and how do you use that uh, data right uh, to actually bring in the focused approach to or engagement to your customers and consumers what is, becomes uh, important. So that's three most important things. One thing that I would probably also want to call out is in, um, in most of the industries, uh, CPG manufacturing industries, uh, what we cannot take away is the physical uh, reach and connect. So uh, the entire concept of physical is what works best uh, in the manufacturing and the CPG industry, where you bring in the perfect mix of both the physical as well as the digital connect and in, uh, engagement uh, with the markets. And uh, digital as a concept is is being driven, uh, you know, quite a bit across uh, the consumer industry, and uh, it it is there to be uh, growing even better now. Uh, so that's something that becomes important as well. So that's predominant where I see uh, how the technology architecture moves. Yep. Anil, you're in mute. So sorry. Um, so I think, uh, good, thanks, Vadi. I think a uh, lot of additional points came on from your side, which added on to what Narendra was talking about technology architecture and from the scalability microservices architecture, data, and of course, the digital engagement, I would call it, right? Digital plus physical, both of them become equally important. So, so that is there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll move to uh, Mr. Mohanty. Uh, Mr. Mohanty, if, uh, you know, as, apart from technology architecture, if you'd like to add on that, but uh, besides that, what changes that do you think are going to be permanent moving forward and how Will it really transform the consumer goods industry's future? Uh, Mr. Mohanty, we cannot hear you. Okay, now I was muted. So, yeah. uh, what is going to be permanent is the way we work now from the anywhere, working from anywhere. So you cannot, uh, you don't have to go to a particular spot and from every day and work from there. So you can work from anywhere. So that is one main change which has happened. And uh, so that we have to refine and uh, make it uh, make it more uh, suitable for everybody to do. And uh, so my main focus is on the manufacturing side you are saying the consumer side but the manufacturing which gives the consumer the goods the manufacturing side has changed a lot because of the uh, pandemic the the supply chain gets disturbed and uh, the raw material supply packing material supply all these supply has to be in some cases they have to be uh, confined to one uh, location again you would try to do the uh, manufacturing at one place uh, maybe small small like uh, earlier the china was doing in a small location everything was being made same same way so, so the customers uh, depends again going back to what i said initially about the localization it has to be localized most of the Activities have to be okay. That is not going to change because today again the uh, movements have become restricted. I think it is going to be restricted all through. Earlier people were starting all over the world. Now going to any other country is very difficult. Any other state is becoming difficult. Any other district is going to be difficult. So everything we can show. So you have to depend on yourself on the local resources. So that is a permanent change, I think. We People think that soon will be again global. We may be global, but the change is permanent that you have to depend mostly on the local. Thank you, Mr. So that Mohanty. is a permanent change. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mohanty. Um, 
I uh, so Hass, I believe you uh, have a you had a hard stop. You had to uh, have something important. Would you like to uh, you know before uh, moving out want to talk about you know uh, how you know digital acceleration has given growth you know and success of the sector, but you know which technology will really become crucial moving forward? You want to give any last thoughts from your side? Sure, sure. But well, I think from my perspective, uh, two or three key areas. Right. First is like Mr. Mohanty said. Uh, remote working is going to become so much so much more uh, a part of the way we work right so collaboration technologies what what we're doing with teams what we're doing with this webcast what we do with the office 365 or a google office kind of setup zoom right so collaboration technologies not just from a video conferencing audio conferencing perspective uh, but but technologies which has help us collaboratively create Content, create documents, work together becomes, I think, exceptionally important, right? Uh, so that's one angle to it. Uh, the second angle to it is, given the fact that you're working remotely, you have people accessing confidential, restricted data, sitting in homes, sitting in cafes, God knows where else, right? Uh, information security, endpoint security uh, becomes exceptionally important, right? So for me, that's that 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 is the second area where I think. A lot more focus will come in, given that people are not restricted to working in an office anymore, uh, and and the access that they have to systems, processes, tools is a lot more than it was pre-COVID, right? Uh, the third area, as 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 we alluded to, is uh, the level of consumer connect personal data that is coming in is so much more higher. Uh, so so having the right uh, strategy for using the data, but also then protecting the data, especially with the PDP bill coming in in India. Uh, of course, it's in discussion for quite some years, but at some point it will come, right? Data localization, data protection. Uh, given the fact that we have a lot more sensitive data, given that we are doing a lot more online, for me, these are the three areas. Apart from the regular business functions, uh, these are the three areas where I think uh, a lot more focus will come. Thank you, Suhas. I think uh, very good points. Edge, uh, end computing, endpoint computing, and security become extremely critical as people start working from anywhere as an add-on collaboration becomes extremely important and data protection you know, considering that we're talking so much about data obviously data protection becomes very very important so thanks a lot to us um in case uh, you need to uh, exit you could do that uh, i just wanted your concluding thoughts uh, around this um manish i'll uh, you know come back to what uh, you know the question i had asked to mr Mahdi. uh what in your views are the changes that are going to be permanent and uh, you know how will these changes really transform the consumer goods industries uh, future see yeah, I'll, I'll also share a bit of a perspective on the technology architecture in addition to whatever has been said essentially uh, uh, in my view companies need to think about a technology architecture from a future perspective right because what business is right now, we can solve the points at this point of time, but will not remain the same. Right? So really, in my mind, building a competitive technology stack, stack uh, starts with accumulating the technical wealth, and which is basically the cloud strategy, microservices, where we really mentioned, so Haas mentioned about data. Right? And the enterprises need a adaptive technology foundation and they can't afford to be taken uh, way down by legacy systems what do i mean that um, when we think about architecture you have to think about from a future perspective as i mean we do a lot of conversations with our clients in terms of cloud strategy or cloud business case and the discussion is very comes on very very closely with cloud business case and uh, because we do uh, a comparison in terms of how the business case looks like uh, transforming the current business. And then we struggle to make a map in terms of whether my business case is positive or negative. The discussion should not be that. The discussion is how the business could evolve in the four or five years and the technology architecture should not restrict us in order to adapt to those business, uh, business scenarios which would come in. Hence, we have to think about it. If imagine the guy from Netflix or imagine the guy from Uber and Ola have thought about a technology architecture and restricted themselves, they would have never imagined a business like this. So it starts from there. Now, in terms of um, what would change and uh, how what will permanently change, I think everything will change, in my opinion, because uh, 
what Mr. Mohanty said is very, very important because you have to localize. People have realized that they cannot rely on manufacturing in China. They have to have manufacturing sources. Uh, I know uh, some of the large consumer goods companies were also trying to innovate with the three third party manufacturers because if they want to launch a new product, uh, doing the cycle within a particular organization that takes its own time. Can I innovate with that product outside? Right? My supply chain will exist, etc. So I think everything will change, in my opinion. And uh, what businesses needs to be uh, adhered and kept in mind is that these change and disruptions will come. And do, how do I prepare ourselves for those? Right? I mean, what we are also looking at, if you look at from a consumer goods perspective, uh, there's a whole flux of B2B play in the market. Uh, Amazon is there, Reliance Geo is there, Flipkart and Walmart is there. Everybody wants to become national wholesalers, right? So the role of consumer goods companies is slightly going down. They want to conquer in that area and then they are putting their private labels into it. If consumer goods don't think about it, it's they will become their competitors. They've already become their competitors. So Amazon also makes shampoos, soaps, uh, what all, right? And at a much lower cost because they don't have cost with reference to advertisement and, and media. So these are the things which will, which is already changing. And if we don't think about those right now, uh, it would become very difficult in order to imagine the business and sustain the business also. So. I think we just have to go with the hypothesis. Everything will change and align. And that's why the point of business strategy aligning tightly with the technology strategy is very fundamental. Because otherwise you get you can create big strategies on the paper. It won't get executed if you don't have a, a digital architecture for the future to support. Right. Thanks a lot. I think uh, as you rightly said that uh, you know change is happening and unless and until you think beyond. Uh, traditional models and all that you will never be able to really embrace that change that's how you manage to get all these digital companies which which actually came into being because they thought beyond which actually brings me to another very interesting point um, and you know narendra we we discussed uh, you know uh, about so many uh, technologies and all um, and you know adoption of different technology but i there must be a lot of barriers to adopting these technologies right from organizations uh, what do you think are some of these barriers to adopting some of the latest technologies? What could really organizations be having? What, what sort of barriers would the organizations really be having to adopt some of these new technologies? Okay. Uh, so the first barrier is the process change uh, that comes by introducing technology. I think that becomes the biggest barrier. People are used to doing things a certain way, which brings a lot of comfort. Uh, COVID, in fact, in that way, uh, possibly is one of the very, very few areas has become, uh, you know, given a positive impact where people have started becoming more comfortable with change now, right? But uh, coming back, uh, I think process change is one of the biggest barriers, you know, uh, in terms of adopting technology. The second barrier traditionally has been technology itself, which is now gradually changing getting used to a technology mm -hmm. interface, the digital touch point or the moment of truth, as we call it, has been traditionally very challenging, requires huge amount of training, huge amount of getting used to, you know, those, because we've always had a different experience ecosystem when it comes to digital in consumer space and a very different ecosystem when it came to digital in a uh, organization space, right? Uh, you have the instars of the world there, but when it came to enterprises, there were really those enterprise uh, solutions, the legacy pieces, right? Where now a lot of focus around experience, UI, UX, uh, and intuitive uh, ways of working is simplifying this. But yeah, technology adoption itself uh, was the second big uh, change, uh, big uh, challenge or a change uh, constraint that was there. The third, uh, from a technology perspective, I think is having a more strategic mindset uh, and you know being able to get a good balance of business case uh, can be a starting uh, challenge to adoption of technology. How do you define a digital strategy that is more long term? 
two years, three years, and not just here and now? How do you build a business case that is more robust? And equally, how do we have partners who give us a more cost optimal solution? Right. All of these three need to really come together uh, to drive this uh, challenge to technology adoption. So to me, these are the three big areas. Right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Processes definitely can be one. And uh, long term thinking, I think, as you said, being able to vision, uh, have that vision for a long term become very important. And of course, the right partners who can actually guide you with the right uh, solutions becomes the third uh, critical aspect. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mohanty. Uh, would like to hear your views around, uh, you know, some of these uh, barriers to organization for adapting some of the new technologies, uh, you know, based on some of the changing trends that are there, which can actually suit the changing consumer behavior. What are your views, Mr. Mohan? Uh, you're on mute, uh, sir. Mr. Mohanty has, uh, I think, some had some problem with his connectivity. Uh, Vedi, can we shift that question to you while Mr. Mohanty comes back to uh, get his connectivity back? Yeah, sure, Mr. Anil. Uh, I had some connection problems as well. Can you please uh, repeat the question there? Yeah, my question was similar to what I asked Narendra only that you know, uh, according to you, what are some of the barriers that organizations have to adopting new technologies? Uh, to suit the you know this changing consumer behavior that we've all been discussing oops it looks like uh Vedi, are okay, you there uh, i'm there i'm back are you able to hear me we're able to yeah. hear you yes sorry okay um firstly we need to you know get this uh you know network connections made sound and reliable so, you know one big barrier and Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, so quickly, uh, like uh, what Narendra had, uh, you know, alluded, uh, you know, change management uh, at the business and more importantly at the grassroots level uh, is something that was always a challenge. Um, that readiness is there now, so we need to probably use that readiness uh, to make sure that uh, you know technology adoption comes. A couple of things. There is also a big mindset change. At least when you look at uh, you know big industry leaders, etc. You know, there's so many, um, so many uh, use cases uh, where you know big industry leaders have uh, you know uh, gone uh, you know unknown in, in in less than five years time types, right? It's because of the fact that uh, you know they've been doing something uh, well for decades or uh, centuries, and they don't want to change unless and otherwise there is a impact that is seen. So what Manish was talking about, how do we start looking at from a future perspective? beforehand and before the industry changes is something that's very very important and uh, that's something that's important uh, to call it out early uh, but one thing I, I i feel that uh, you know what tech is also changing is uh, tech was always being built in a uh, a permanent beta phase uh, when i said permanent beta space it was always being experimented right it was never being built for scale and value at least in an industry like uh, you know, consumer goods and where we connect to billions and millions of uh, customers or consumers, uh, we need tech that can actually scale up in no time. Okay, that has changed. Now, whenever there is a tech that is coming in, the time taken to scale it and move it into a, a, a value based kind of a technology is not taking as much time as it, as it used to take earlier. That's a big, big change that's happening. Uh, which was a, a, a barrier for us to, you know, take changes or take technology to a, a, a mass or, a, you know, a big scale. So that has definitely, definitely changed. And what also happens as a, um, um, as a uh, overflow to this is basically, you know, there's so many changes, technology coming in, uh, standardization takes a hit. Right, uh, you can't keep changing technology and other things on a day-to-day uh, -day basis. Right, you need to also bring in some bit of standardization there. Uh, there's a lot of work that's happened, um, and uh, you know we do see standardization in new technologies that are coming in as well, uh, so that you can probably plug in uh, to the existing you know uh, technology and your business as and when it comes in. So that becomes a, a big, big uh, you know um, change that is needed, which was a barrier, which is actually growing right now. 
So those were predominantly over and above what uh, Narendra, Narendra had called out. Um, you know, needs to be looked at, but of course, it's changing quite um, at, at quite a speed and in the right direction. Thanks, uh, Vadi. Uh, standardization indeed becomes uh, very critical as there are so many new technologies that are really coming in to be able to you know start off to one and being able to you know, replicate that uniformly across uh, the entire group. Uh, Mr. Monty, are you uh, back? Are you able to? Are you connected? Uh, I hope the connectivity issue is gone. Could you please uh, unmute yourself uh, if you are connected? Looks like connectivity. That's definitely an area that needs improvement. Otherwise, digital collaboration, we talked about it. But ultimately, we are still facing a lot of these, you know, struggling with a lot of these issues. So, um, you know, I'll just leave, uh, you know, uh, one last question, which we have, uh, you know, for all of you to really answer. Considering that, you know, uh, I, I am back. Can I speak? I am back. Oh, great, great, sir. So we were just discussing Actually, about. I, had a that I wanted to tell. Yeah, yeah. Please, we can hear you. First, the obstacles. See, obstacles. Uh, I, are you in that same subject? What are the obstacles? Sir, I was talking about barriers to uh, adopting technology in organizations. If you could share your views around that. Adopting technology to organizations. Barriers, barriers, sir. Uh, that, yes, there is the barriers. See, the main barriers for the uh, applying technology is the mindset of the people. The, the, if you see the, uh, I give a, a relative change, I give some example. So, in manufacturing, till today, we are doing uh, the manufacturing of any, any object by cutting, shaping, lot of operations. Now that has been manufacturing by 3D printing. So the IT manufacturing, the design for the IT manufacturing is different for designing for the machining and the, the, the subtractive manufacturing. So this is the obstacle is those people who are habituated to subtractive manufacturing now coming to the RIT manufacturing, there is a sea change, there is a completely new approach. So that that type, same thing happens to the appli application of new technology. New technology in the organizations, we try to apply, suppose, uh, uh, the general tendency was to mass production. Now it is reverse. The lot size has become unique. Mass disintermediation, mass customization. So the customization to that effect is the only one piece in the lot. Earlier, for any uh, econ economy size, you have to produce a lot. Now that is not there. So these changes which have come, and the obstacle is the people who are. Uh, what do what you say in their comfort level? The senior people and the people who are controlling the change, they are in their comfort zone. They don't want to move out of the comfort zone. The obstacle is the people to come out of the comfort zone and accept the new technology, which is totally different. Different in the line that subtractive manufacturing to additive manufacturing. Same way. So the, the main main obstacle is in the mindset of people. They have to leave that and go to a new set of technology. So that is what is the main obstacle. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Monty. I think very uh, valid point. I think uh, uh, mindset. Uh, besides, of course, we discussed standardization and uh, you know other aspects about processes. But I think mindset becomes extremely important. Uh, 
uh, as a barrier and you gave a good example of additive and subtractive manufacturing uh, you know so there is a sea change there so thank you for sharing that uh, we are reaching the end of our uh, you know panel discussion so i will just ask all the panelists to uh, you know give one uh, you know conclusive uh, thought and i'll just uh, you know come back to the question i'd asked to ask and i like to ask the same question to all of you that you know digital acceleration is a given for the growth and success of but uh, which technologies will become crucial now moving forward for the growth of this so we can start with you maybe narendra and then we'll uh, move to vedi and manish we can go in that way okay uh so i'll start with which technology becomes crucial so i think technology uh, that delivers speed uh, agility so how do we move out of legacy as manish was mentioning and get into more uh, low cost sort of microservices architecture uh, i think those technologies become crucial technologies related to analytics and data democratization become absolutely crucial and technology platforms like cloud which support cloud and collaboration which support anytime anywhere concept these are the three big technology areas which uh, to me become absolutely crucial in the times we are in right and conclusively uh, i love the uh, what manish mentioned you know the only thing that is permanent now is change uh, right change is accelerated it will only continue uh, people will get used to now the new speed of change uh, so how are we more agile and adaptable as a technology uh, you know organization and technology partners uh, is the big area uh, that's going to be bringing business value thank you narendra uh, vadi your view points um so but i i think i'll i'll call out four things importantly uh, one is mobile and internet penetration which we did not pretty much call out uh, as much right uh, because what we do is uh, you know as much as time that we get the mind space and mind time of the end consumer or the customer that we get and we being there where they spend most of their time is what becomes important so uh, everything is changed right the way we act the way we buy browse learn the way we look at entertainment is all mobile now right uh, so how do we use this internet and mobile penetration right that becomes important one uh, two we were talking about uh, you know microservices architecture you know that also brings in the niche capability bring in expertise as and when we want it plug in plug out kind of capabilities that we can probably build in um, along with cloud uh, the third important and probably i also see it as one of the most important piece is uh, how do you use data to make uh, you know focused decisions and engagements across uh, not just at a consumer customer level but data becomes most important in the entire value chain we in supply chain how do you look at your uh, manufacturing your uh, you know planning and uh, distribution everything becomes important and finally with all this you know everything going digital everything going uh, technology uh, data security or information sec uh, you know uh, security becomes most most critical um, there are some markets where uh, with gdpr in europe and uh, you know strong uh, uh, you know security policies in china etc it's already there but uh, you know in markets like india and other uh, you know markets there's good amount of work that needs to be done on this and this become very very critical and uh, uh, so has also touched upon a point on uh, ethics of data usage So it's not just about uh, information and data security, but it's also how do we use the data that we need only, rather than you know having everything with us. So that becomes important. Thank you, uh, Vadi. Uh, Manish, uh, what are your thoughts? I think uh, uh, all the technologies uh, are as we go right in terms of uh, and their specific use cases. But I think uh, I would double down on three. Uh, which which really will define uh, in terms of next uh, horizon in which all we need to be one is cloud as because i mean you cannot achieve new business models if you are not in cloud that's fundamental the second thing the power of ai what it will give in your hands in the hands of everybody and it will be everywhere and third thing is what narendra mentioned is security because what will eventually happen because of one and two 
it will essentially have such a wide access of information or whatever we are saying. So security will become and is already becoming. We have seen threats recently in UK, US. We have seen what happened in India uh, for a for a retail uh, giant, and so and there are new laws which are being generated. So this will become fundamentally, in my mind, a very important aspect, which all our businesses have to think. They are already thinking it's not a part of board discussion. But in my mind, these three think in the short term will redefine uh, the, the perspective of this. Thank you, Manish. Uh, uh, Mr. Mohanty, uh, would you like to add something around uh, on this? Mr. Mohanty, uh, you're on mute. Yeah, so can you just repeat the question? Sometimes I get disconnected. I am not properly connected. Tell me the question. Yeah, what I was saying was that currently, uh, you know, uh, digital acceleration now is a given for the growth and success of this uh, consumer goods and services sector. So which technologies do you think will become crucial now moving forward for the sector? See, one technology which was coming, I don't know, suddenly slowed down. That was the blockchain. I would have suggested blockchain would come uh, quite strong because slowly it will replace the legal complications of uh, agreement, letter of credit and other things. But it is not, uh, uh, recently it has slowed down. So that is one technology which I would uh, prefer to do this are basically from the very technical aspects, not the commercial aspects. The technology like edge computing, edge computing, computational chemistry, computational toxicology, healthcare, this, the, the modification of uh, the, the vacuum generation is done by modification of uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, in the genes, so there's a DNA modification, RNA modification. So these are the things which are going to become very important. Thank you, Mr. Mohanty. Um, so with that, we uh, I come to the end of my questions, uh, but we do have some questions coming in from the audience. So uh, we'll just do that before we conclude today's session. So uh, the first question that has come is, uh, you know, would you, if there, you know, whether there would be any kind of IT fatigue as we move out of the pandemic, because we've been all leveraging IT so much, I guess this question is very much valid over here, that, you know, we've been using IT so much, sitting out of home, using so many collaboration tools and all that. So once the pandemic is over, is there likely to be a lot of IT fatigue? Uh, Anish, would you like to uh, sure. So it's a it's a very interesting question, and I want to definitely there will be fatigue in terms of having online meetings, right? I mean, uh, the fatigue has gone to a level that uh, we don't like to have online meetings, right? So that I wish uh, that should change very quickly so that we can have first connect and meet with the people as we were doing. What will not change uh, in terms of uh, uh, the leverage of the the amount of time you used to spend on a mobile app or, or on your mobile, right? In terms of your habits of going and uh, shopping on the mobile, right? Because what it is also, there's, there's absolutely a fatigue, but there's also, uh, uh, I would say, realization that you can buy stuff uh, online which you were not buying earlier. Right? It is not about small things. You can buy big things also online and there's a lot of convenience of buying uh, those things. So absolutely, lot. some of these things will change uh, uh, for the good in order to have uh, a personal connect. But I think uh, the, what it has also realized and given us a realization that what technology could achieve is immense. Right? I mean, and if you look around the whole pandemics, the earlier pandemics have shown the whole surge of e-commerce which happened in China.
but uh, it will it will in my sense the power of technology Uh, related to the consumer goods and services sector, what kind of a future scenario do you see in the next few years? Is it a highly digital or a hybrid shopping environment that you see? So uh, either of you can start off with the with the answer. Yeah, very uh, please. Okay, uh, sorry, I was not able to unmute. Okay, uh, now I can. Uh, look, like I said, it's going to be a, a mode of digital going forward, uh, definitely. Uh, one, to influence and build the trust and loyalty at the same time to uh, take the reach. That's predominantly how it is going to get split, right? Uh, and going forward, uh, you know, um, wherever it is digital first, uh, your physical experience is going to complement and wherever you know, it continues to be a physical reach where you have digital experience being complemented. So it is going to be a, a mix of both in in, in the right, uh, uh, you know, mix, depending on the channel, depending on the end user, depending on the maturity model in each of the business as it is. That's the way it would work. Thank you. Uh, Narendra, your viewpoints on this? Yeah. Uh one on the original one, IT fatigue. I'd like to believe there will be a lot of IT comfort going forward. Of course, people are yearning personal connects, uh, which will come back. But I believe there will be a lot of IT comfort. And absolutely, the world is going to be digital. Uh, I don't see it becoming digital only or physical only. It's going to be omni-channel. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mohanty, you have uh, any, any views on this uh, question in terms of what do you see as the future uh, highly digital or a hybrid shopping environment? We're not able to hear you. So uh, it will be digital, no doubt. But the, uh, the shape of the digital is likely to be changed with the uh, Computing, changing their nature to the quantum computing and all. So the uh, digital what you mean today may not be what digital it will be tomorrow. It will be digital, no doubt, but it will be different digital. So it's just going to evolve further. It will be transformed. Disruptively transformed, it is evolved, it is continuous, it will be disruptively transformed. It will have metamorphosis from caterpillar to bat butterfly. Right, sir. Good example. Um, so, uh, with that, we come to the end of the panel discussion. Uh, thanks. I think some good questions have come in from the uh, attendees. And uh, thank you, gentlemen. I mean, you've really great, given great insights uh, on the consumer goods and services industry and its way forward. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, now invite uh, Manish to just kind of sum up today's session and just do a vote of thanks, and then we will call it the day. I'll have a few more housekeeping announcements. So thank you, thank you, Anil, for uh, for uh, being the MC of the session, and uh, thank you, Narendra, Vedi, and uh, Mr. Mohanty. I think thank you for your insights um, as we as we go into the next level of uh, uh, I mean environment post COVID. I believe uh, we all would stay safe and all our families. And uh, hopefully this type of session we would be able to do face to face, sitting in a room, and, uh, having a little more engrossed chat. And uh, I think uh, the last thing I would say that. Uh, the, the whole the whole technology uh, and the digital or whatever we call it is becoming fundamental part of the business and you all are driving on a daily basis uh, within your organization and i think uh, the role of technology will will continue to elevate and will give a differentiation to the to the business and the power to business to the industry, uh, with reference to their business so thank you for your participation and uh, please stay safe